Alright everybody, welcome to 8-Bit Millie. It's been a while since I've done any repair videos, I'm going to get back into them now. I've really been busy coding and moving and everything else, but now I'm going to get back into doing some repair videos. And as you can see before you, I have about a month's worth of work right here. What we have here is an Atari 800 computer from 78, I think it came out. An Atari 410 program recorder, i.e. cassette deck. An XM301 300 baud modem. This kid, this is for the XE series. An Atari 1050 disk drive from the XL series. An Atari 810 disk drive. This is from the Atari 800 time. Another Atari 1050 disk drive. And an Indus GT disk drive. These are all Atari compatible. Let's see how do you open these things up. It opens up, like, come on. These things have been sitting for so long. It opens up, believe me. These have been sitting for so long, as you can tell with the 1050, and you can definitely tell with the 810. They've been sitting in some really smoke-filled areas. I did a preliminary, a preliminary test on the 800 and the 1050 a while back when I first got them. They both work. The 410 doesn't work partially. I think it has bad belts in it. It won't rewind. It only fast forwards into play. Jerks on and off. So I'm assuming that it doesn't work. I never did test the 310 yet or 301. We'll have to figure out if we can actually even test that. And also with this, I have a box of about 300 floppies that we're going to test with. And what we're going to do when we get done with it is use with this little beast right here. I think it's a PCSIO called. What it does, it allows you to plug into an 810 disk or 1050 disk drive, 810 disk drive, anything that has the Atari connection, and plug the USB on the other end into a PC and run the, I believe it's APE, the Atari, Peripher Atari Peripheral Exchange program, which will then let me read those diskettes. And what we're going to do is going to image all 300 of them, and then we'll upload them to an archive of some sort. So, for today, what we're going to do is we're going to just test out the 800 on screen. We're going to see what's wrong with it and get an idea what we have to fix. So, let's get set up to do that. Okay, so now I've got your, the 800 hooked up to the TV here. And I turned it on, powered up. It comes up to the ready sign, so that's a good sign there. Oh, the reason it does ready, let me just give you a little, let me just give you a little walkthrough on the 800 series. The 800, like the 400... And the 1200XL, I believe, did not come with anything inside. When you turn it on without a basic programming cartridge in there, as such, it just takes you to memo pad, which is basically lets you type on the screen. It's a good way to test the keyboard, though, from here. So we can do this. We can press the different keys. We'll make sure the key works. Sticky key there. You notice the 800 makes a clicking sound. That actually carries over from the 400, which had a membrane keyboard, and when you press the keys on that, there was no sound because it was flat. So, it kept the keyboard clicking sound, which you can turn off internally. I remember doing that when I was younger. I had a 600XL, and I remember having to turn the key... The cat lock works. That shift works. That shift works. The control works. Can't test option and select. Now, if I hold down Option when I restart, does it? Nope. Okay, so we know where those are working, so let's open it up. And this does have an interlock in here when you open it up, and no, it don't. They used to. Uh, I could have sworn it did have an interlock that turned it off. Yeah, it does right there. I don't know why it's not. Oh, maybe it's a reset. Okay, so I'm going to put the 400, or the, what, the basic cartridge in. The 800 had two cartridge slots. You could put two cartridges in them. Only a few games ever made ever made use of the right slot. So let's put that in there. And go into basic. 
and this is supposed to have it, the interlock is supposed to turn it off, so I don't know why. So let's do a quick basic code just to make sure basic's working. I typed in the first letter. Ooh, that's strange. Let's try it again. After I typed in the first line, it just froze right up. We have loose keys. I can know that right now. froze up because I had, I just reset, I didn't start it over, <laughs> we'll see, so there we go, let's run this game, you know, I just did a quick hello world, you got that, that works, okay, um, let's see, how, was it free, use a question mark, I think free zero is, right, 37,870 bytes free RAM in here, this is a 48k machine, a, about uh, 10K is being used by the system for video and everything else. And then you have BASIC. Actually, I think BASIC is sitting on some of the RAM, too. It's been so long. So, anyways, we do know she works, but we know she has some issues. And when the, some of the keys are coming up. Look, at the keys are just popping off in places. So, this is going to need some cleaning and some repairs. So, let's get started with that. Well, let's, first off, let's take off... I turn off the TV, take out the basic cartridge, disconnect the power supply, put it down there, unhook the wire. And what we're going to do is I want to just open it up and get a good look at it inside. Now, I know this cover comes off, and it's going to be kind of hard how I'm showing you here because I don't have the top-down camera yet set up. But I'm going to take this cover off. First off, to do that is I'm going to remove those two screws right there. Those screws out of the way, and that removes this top cover off of it. It's been a few years since I pulled one of these apart, but I do recall how they worked. I know this thing just slides out. We just have to figure out which way. There it goes, slides forward. See, what that does, that exposes the RAM banks that are in here. These are all the video, uh, all the RAM that's available to it. Each one of these is 16K, I believe. One of these may be ROM. Let's go and take a look. I'm going to take out the first one here. This one may be a ROM card. Yeah, it's a ROM card. This is, so this is the ROM card. OS, the operating system, is in that one. And then the other one is 16K worth of RAM. Each card is 16K. So it does have 48K of RAM in it. So if you think about how the memory is laid out, you have 48K of RAM, and then the upper 16K is the operating system card here, and then the basic sits on top of 8K of RAM. So that's why you have less RAM. So that, this goes here. I'm going to just... Actually, you know what? I may just take these out for now, because I'm going to take the cover off. Let's take them out. Set them down to the side here. I have yet to get my work site set up to where I can do like I've done at the other places I was at before, like when we were in Ohio or in Bridgewater, but I will get there. Serial number is 84302, number 193. I don't know what that means, but okay. doing is I'm removing the screws off the bottom. There appears to be five screws total. So those five screws there. And now I should be able to lift the top off. I think. Or do I lift the bottom off? Which way does it come apart? 
lift the bottom off. Okay, it's all bolted to the top, so there's the bottom. See, one reason why we're stripping this down is not only just to look at the inside, but this thing does need a major bath, obviously. Let's get things out of the way so I don't accidentally knock them flying. So now what we have here is we have the computer, and it's mounted to the top of the case, not the bottom, which is kind of interesting. Let's get a, something to hold these in. Do, do, do. do I have any anywhere? I was looking for something to hold the screws in, but I don't seem to have one available. So I'm just going to set them over here for right now and try not to lose them. So what we're going to do next is we're going to take this apart here. And this is held in how. Okay, it's not that. I know it comes out in a one tooth, I think that right there's one screw. It comes out as a single unit, and I want to pull it all apart. Okay. I can take this out right here, the speaker, the internal speaker. I can remove that right now. Put that over here to the side. Okay, this is coming out now. I removed three screws and that gets that out. Put the screws to the side over here so we don't lose those. Now, this should come off to the point where I got the keyboard in the way. Yes, right there. See, the keyboard is still attached. So I'm going to disconnect the keyboard next. Okay, we got the keyboard there. And see how some of the keys are falling off. So this does. We need to not only clean it, but we ought to figure out some way of getting the keys to stay on. So look at they're all just falling right off. So yeah, this is definitely gonna need a bath. And definitely gonna have to fix the keyboard. So let's get the keyboard off the rest of the way. Again, I apologize if you're looking, trying to see what I'm doing, and you can't see it because of the camera angle. I will be fixing that in a future video. Oh, look at it. We got this washer in there. It's a nice thing to get loose in there and have it fry something, or does that actually belong in it? Oh, but it does belong in it. Little washers go right here. Why? I don't know, but they do. So let's put that to the side here, these screws. And this is ready to be cleaned. And see right here, this is the what I was saying. There's a button that tells it that you have it open and closed. And this is it right here. And you have the lid when you have the, when you open the lid up. And here is the button down here. But it's it was stuck. Huh, we'll have to figure that one out. It's not necessary. That was a, a feature I think they put in just to stop people from breaking it. You know, hurting the computer or popping it off or popping it open. So let's get these off here. Let's just take out the space bar. Get all the keys out. The keys are just falling off, so don't need a key puller for this one. Okay, what I'm going to do is all these things are going to get soaked in some really hot soapy water and scrubbed down really good. All the keys, all the plastic, everything. And then we'll scrub it and scrub it and get rid of all the smoke and grime. These are nice key switches, as you can see them. It's nice, they're metal contact. That's really nice. The one key was sticking, and that's probably because of all the dust bunnies in there. All right, let me get something to put these in here. Uh, here, we'll just do this. We'll just take a shipping box and we'll just make us a box to put all the keys in. And all the screws for that matter, so we don't lose nothing.
All right, more plastics over here. Um, let's take these out, too. They have a little... I think. Yeah, okay, yeah. I didn't want to break them. I'm taking these these out. It's just this plastic is old, so it might be brittle, so I want to be careful with it. Take out the option to system reset and select. And I think the last one is start. Take those buttons out. It's going slow because I don't want to break them, so I'm going very gently pushing them out, pending the little tabs back. Okay, and then we have a light tube here that comes out too. And that just leaves that there. Now we can also take this out if we want. This right here is the switch, the, 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 the little, the, what do you call it? The the latch for the top up there. We can take that out if we want, but I'm not going to worry too much about that one. All right, so now back to here. This aluminum, aluminum monstrosity is the RF shield that stops this thing from making a mess of TV signals. We could take that apart to get down further and deep in the motherboard, but I'm not going to worry about it because it is a sealed, semi-sealed unit. So I am pretty sure there's no dust in there. So I'm not going to take that apart, but we will clean all this out. We'll blow it all out, wipe everything down, make sure that everything's nice and clean before we put it back together. So we've got it all apart, and now what I'm going to do is I will clean it all up, make it nice and pretty, and then next episode, we will assemble it and move on to the next one, which will be the disk drive that we do know works, so that we can get a working system up and just see how that looks, and then we'll go into the other disk drives to see if I can get them up and running. The 810 disk drive and the 1050 disk drive I should be okay with because they all use the same power supplies as the 1050 I have now. The Indus, the Indus GT uses a different power supply, so I'm going to have to source that or find something that gives me power just like it floating around here in the office. If it's 12 volts DC, I have no problem. I have a Meanwell power supply I can use. If it's AC, I may have it somewhere. So, next episode, all this will be cleaned up, and we'll reassemble it, and we'll go on to the 1050 drive. Have a good day.